today I'd like to go over a welder qualification uh, coupon for plate. Seems to be a little mystery out there and how to uh, put it together and what it actually qualifies people for. So what I have here now is 3 8 A36, group one, group two steel, seven inches long. That'll qualify you by AWS D11 from eighth inch to three quarter. And this is probably the most common qualification that everybody seems to do. If you need thicker, you know, unlimited thickness, two, three, whatever, then we do a one inch. But this normally covers most every company that I deal with uh, needs. I already went to the trouble of knocking off the weldable primer, which I'm not a fan of. Won't find that in D1 code. Uh, <clears throat> and all the other stuff, mill scale. Remember, mill scale, weldable primer, coolant from the saw, and uh, paint, anything like that is not your friend. Rust, get rid of all that. All that is going to do nothing but mess you up. So first thing I do is take a grinder, hard wheel grinder, not one of them flappers or something that might smear it around. Get a hard wheel grinder that puts a pretty good, uh, you know, coarse grid on there and clean everything up that's going to be in contact or close to the welding. The back side of the bevel, the bevel face, and the top, okay? These are beveled by cold at a 45 degree uh, groove angle, which is, so this plate is 22 and a half, okay? And then I'll have a quarter inch gap, root opening, uh, and I'll use a backing bar of quarter inch, one inch wide this time. If I had to do radiograph, then I'd need a three inch wide one. But uh, and I'll show you the proper way to put these together. I see all kinds of different methods. People put shims under here and got vice grips all over. Do it way too hard. I've done thousands of these. Easiest way to do it, find something flat. I like I-beams, so I can get clamps on them. Set it here, butt it up on the back, put a vice grip on it, real easy. And then, knowing I got a one inch backing bar and I got a quarter inch gap, that means I need about a three eighths line there. Just give me a reference for the backer goes. But I don't use that when I put together, I use that for locating the backer. I put the other plate up here, butt it up tight, keep it flush on the end, put a vice grip on that. And being that my backing bar is quarter, I got the proper gap already, simple stuff. Then I flip it over, put it down. The backing bar is eight inches. I like to have runoff onto and off of, of my coupon qualification plate. So I let it overhang both ways a half inch. And I use the lines that I pre-located, so I don't have to waste your time, to center it. Sometimes I don't do that when I'm in a hurry for practice and they get off center. But if you're really into it, you know, you want everything going your way, especially for the real deal qualification, you got a lot of money in this, a lot riding on it, might as well get everything going your way. Okay. So now everything's tight. The other thing, gaps are not friendly for you either. Get rid of all the gaps you can. So I clamp it like that, then I'll tack it on the ends and I'll tack it in the center. If you don't tack the center, you run the risk of that backing bar heating up and pulling away from your plates. And in any kind you give, anytime you get a gap, you're running into a chance of not having fusion on the back side. Now that we got it clamped with the backing bar in the right spot, I'm going to tack it on both ends and then in the middle. Okay, now, now that the backing bar is tacked tight, I take it off, flip it over, and I mark out where the bend, the bend test will come from, the face bend and the root bend. What I do, and I recommend you do, it's totally legal, code says I can do this, they don't, don't say I can't. I draw these lines on here, so I know right where my bend tests are going to be taken. Always a good idea. This is the area you don't want to have any trouble in. If your wire welder's acting up, what, if you got to stop for whatever reason, you got gas issue with uh, flux core, I don't want to have any trouble in these areas. This is where I'm going to bend the root bend and face bend. The center part is where, I, if I have an issue with either one of these, that gives me a third option to redo. Okay. The end, inch on the bottom and inch on the top, I disregard them, throw them right out. So. 
nice to have that, especially if I'm welding 7018 where I had an electrode, there's no way it's going to make it from one end to the other and I got to stop. I like to stop in this middle area. I try not to be in them bends if I can help it. And a 3 8 plate is normally going to take three passes to fill it out. I have to be above surface, I cannot be low. The root pass, all I'm focusing on is burning these bevel points into that backing bar. If I'm doing it right, as I come up there, there should be a bit of a divot. That tells me I'm penetrating the backing bar. The idea on the root pass is not to weld the two plates together, it's to burn into the backing bar. Then I clean that off, uh, grinder, brush, everything, make sure there's no slag, can't have nothing in there. If I have any convexity on the toes, I'll knock that down. Then the, the mid pass, all I worry about on the mid pass is filling it up for the cap. That's all I care about is the cap. So ideally for me, I like to be maybe a sixteenth below surface. So I'll run that up. Same way, I should have a little bit of a divot right here where it burns into the root pass. And then I let it cool. Uh, that's a big thing. Most people get in too big a hurry. This isn't a very big weldment. It's going to heat up fast. If this thing's over two, 250, I don't let it cool. I like to weld it at about a hundred and a half. Uh, anything hotter than that, I run the risk of having undercut and issues at the top. And then I run the uh, cap on there. Ideally, the cap, I need to be now uh, 32nd to 16th on height. I can be up to an eighth inch, but I can't be underfilled. Underfilled is automatic failure. So. Okay, brush that off. And make sure you got good fusion on the end. No excessive convexity. And when I run that, I run it right up through the plate. And there it is burning into the backing bar. Always a good sign when you've got penetration in the backing bar. Like I said earlier, my main focus with the root pass is to burn into the backing bar, not weld these two plates together. Apparently now I'm checking the temperature of it. Uh, right now I'm about 250 degrees. Uh, at the top, I'm up around 300. A little warm. Uh, if I check my well procedure, uh, I should probably let that cool down a little bit. What will happen is this is a small weldment. When I get to the top, it's going to get hotter, especially this next pass. And it's going to keep doing that. So monitoring the temperature into this coupon is kind of important. There we're in the mid, cast, mid pass to the top. Gonna to remove the slag. Examine it. It looks pretty good. I use the heat gun to check how hot my coupon is. And I'm right now about 500 at the top. Still too hot to weld. I let that cool down to maybe two, 250. These heat guns are a big asset for qualification. You can pick them up at Home Depot for like 35 bucks, you know. So now I'm ready for the cap, okay. You'll notice with flux core, I don't do any pausing on these sides, okay. With a higher deposit rate, I'm moving back and forth real fast, more like a robot would weld if you've ever seen one. And I'm keeping my puddle that wide and I'm carrying the whole thing up the hill. That's exactly what I'm doing. You won't be seeing me pause over on the sides. Unlike 7018 shield metal arc welding which has a much lower deposit rate i would come over and i would stop on the toe let the well the puddle catch up with me blow across the center fast and pause on the other toe why i do this is the center weld gets twice as much because i cross back and forth very much like when i was a kid drinking pop in the back of a car the kid in the middle gets twice as much pop as the guys on the outside it's the same way with welding. I have to let that metal come over there and fill out before I go back across. And when I go across, I waste no time. And then I pause on both toes. See how fast I'm moving, yeah?
Yeah, we got the cap done now. Um, remove the slag. Looks fine. I got about a 16th, yeah, 30 second to a 16th of weld reinforcement. That would be weld above the base metal. Uh, really where you want it, about right. Everything looks good there. So, so there's to it, flux core. Now, we have the SMAW coupon. We'll finish welding this out with 718. I've already welded the whip pass and mid pass and started some of the cap. I'm going to finish running some more of this cap to show you the difference in my movement, okay? This stuff here, I'll run over there, unlike the flux core I just ran where I was really fast side to side, I don't pause on the edges. Total opposite with this. With the slower deposit rate of 7018, I have to come across and I'll pause and let that toe fill out. Let the puddle catch me. Once I see that filling out, I'll go back to the other side and do the same thing. So I go across the center fast, pause, then I come back across the center to the other side and I pause. A lot of guys I work with count. They'll have a two, two second hold on the edge, one across the center, and then two second hold on this edge. So they go one, two, three, one, two, three. Very common with guys. I don't count, but a lot of people do. But it's about a two to one ratio that you want to pause on the edges. But same story with uh, the flux core. I usually, it takes three layers minimum to fill out a 3 8 plate. Uh, a lot of guys do it in four or more if you grind a lot, but if you don't grind much and you got pretty decent layers inside, you can do it in three. Uh, but there's, there's no right or wrong, but uh, the more you grind, the more you got to weld, the hotter it gets, the more issues you have with uh, discontinuities and things. You can see flux core, much more uh, deposit rate, way faster, really pretty bead appearance. I can go coast to coast from top to bottom, don't have to stop, don't have to restart. Restarts are always a problem. Over here with the 718, I don't know how many restarts I'd have in there, probably six to eight if I just do three passes. Uh, much slower. Arc welding, been around since the 1890s. Uh, I believe that the uh, flux coating come out about in the 1930s. Flux core, on the other hand, started in the 1950s. This, the flux core we're running here today is gas shielded as well as having the flux in it. So high uh, technology, high performance, high deposit rate, and way of the future. Now we have our coupon welded out, finished, three passes, three eighths plate, flux core, okay? The next thing to do is we're gonna cut it to make the bend specimens. What happens is the first inch I cut and throw away and the top inch, cut and throw away. The next inch and a half here and here is where I get my bend specimens. The center is just a backup one if I mess it up or need to redo it or have a question or something. The section right here, okay, I cut it off, cut the backer out of it, ground the face off of it, and then I sanded it smooth to see if I got any discontinuities and then I'll bend that. By bending this in the bend fixture, what I'm really doing is stretching this face. So if you have a flaw subsurface around the top is going to show. Any flaw bigger, an eighth, bigger than an eighth inch fails. You, you'll see nicks or whatever. Uh, rips, cracks, any of those things that are automatic failures. Anything less than an eighth inch, I accumulate up to three eighths. So if you got a couple marks that are sixteenth, you're okay all the way up to and including three eighths. The other one's the opposite. I did the same thing, but this time I sanded off the face, cut off the backing bar, and I prepped the face to do a face bend. So this one I bend this way, this one's the same as that, but I bend this up, and that's why I got it prepared upside down. Root bends are 80 plus percent of the failures that come from bend tests. So the middle one right here I haven't prepped at all, 
that's just a backup. So if I, if I have an issue or a question of what happened here, I'm not sure if it's me preparing it or you that welded it, I can use this center as well. I didn't weld these, so we'll see what happens. Uh, no promises on pass or fail. So we'll go to the bender now, eh? Root bend, face bend. We'll put them in the bender and see what happens. All the bender really does is stretch them. And if there's a flaw, a void, uh, some trap slag, she's gonna rip or break. So, and I have no idea what's gonna happen. Let's say I didn't weld it. One little flaw right there that's unmeasurable. It's smaller than a 32nd. It doesn't even count. So that's plenty good, no concerns there. Face bend, flawless. You can see the face bend's quite a bit wider, a little bit more wiggly where the um, weld reinforcement comes over the edge. Normal look, perfect, not, not a flaw at all.